Trying to look at some problems now with exponential graphs. State the transformations of f of x equals e to the power of x needed to form the graph of uh, f of x equals 2 e to the power of 3x minus 1. Let's look at uh, dilation factors first of all. Um, what we're going to have here is a dilation uh, associated with the 2 and a dilation associated with the 3 as well. So let's start with the 2. Uh, the 2 out the front, remember that's our um, dilation with regard to the x-axis. So it's going to be a dilation by a factor of 2 from the x-axis. That's our first dilation. Second dilation is a 3 there. So that's our y-axis uh, dilation. Remember it's 1 over the coefficient of x. So it's dilation by a factor of 1 on 3 from the y-axis. And we've got a, a minus 1 here, which means the graph is translated one unit down. There we go. Next one, we'll just sketch the graph of f of x equals e to the power of x on the same set of axes. Uh, sketch the graph of f of x equals e to the power of x minus 2, marking the asymptote, the y-intercept, state the transformation, the domain, and the range. Five things there. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so we've got uh, this graph here, and we have to sketch um, the original e to the power of x graph here first up. So um, we know that that graph uh, looks something like this, passes through uh, the y-intercept at one there, it's also going to pass through to give us a bit of a guide, uh, 1 comma e. And remember e, when we talked about it first up, it was about 2.71. So I've marked uh, 1 comma about 2.7 there. So now e to the x graph passes through there and goes upwards like that. And on the same set of axes, we've got to mark e to the power of x minus 2. So, um, as far as the asymptote's concerned, it won't change because the graph is not being um, translated up or down the y-axis. It is being translated, though, two places to the right, as we've got e to the power of x minus 2 there. So, two places to the right. So, let's mark in... Um, We've got uh, one point there which instead of going to, is instead of being 0, uh, comma 1 is now going to be 2, comma 1. It's shifted two places to the right. And our 1, comma e, which is there, okay, uh, it's going to be 3, comma e, like so. Now, the other thing we have to do is find the y-intercept, because it's going to change because the graph has been moved two places to the right. Um, so if we look at the y-intercept, um, to find y intercept, we make x equals 0. So here's our graph of y equals e to the power of x minus, oops, x minus 2. So if x equals 0, we're going to get y equals e to the power of 0 minus 2, um, which is going to be y equals e to the power of negative 2. So our intercept is going to be uh, e to the power of negative 2. You can work that in a calculator if you like, but it's a, quite a small number. We'll draw this graph in a different colour. We'll go for a sort of pink colour here. Um, so the graph's going to look something like this. It stays very low to the axis and then starts to rise in the same way. I'll try that again. Start, starts to rise in the same way as its counterpart rises over there. So something like that. Uh, that's going to be y equals e to the power of x minus 2. Now, domain and range um, is asked for there, um, and also the transformation. So transformation is going to be 
two units to the right domain is real numbers range is positive real numbers as the normal graph is next question sketch the graph of 3e e to the power of 2x marking the asymptote and intercepts state transformations domain and range let's do the transformation straight up um, because we've got a 3 there and a 2 there uh, so our transformations are going to be uh, dilated because of the 3 out the front there by a factor of 3 from x-axis and our other dilation dilated by a factor of 1 on 2 from y-axis Now our domain, uh, sorry, our intercept, so y-intercept, um, remember it doesn't have an x-intercept uh, because the asymptote is the um, x-axis there, y equals zero, and it hasn't been shifted up and down. So if it's shifted down, it means it's going to have an x-intercept all of a sudden, but it hasn't been shifted up or down. So no x-intercepts, but the y-intercept, y-intercept, we make x equals 0, so y equals 3e to the 2 times 0, y equals 3e to the power of 0, which is 3, 3 times 1. Okay, so let's mark in our axes here, 1, 2, and 3. The y intercept there. Um, now the dilations here are interesting because I've just drawn in, after pausing there, uh, the normal graph of y equals e to the power of x. The dilation of 3 from the x-axis, and that fits in because our, our y intercept is there. Um, so the graph's been shifted. Let's get my pink arrow back. Um, by a factor of 3 from the x-axis. Um, but it's also been uh, dilated by a factor of. Um, let's go back, sorry. By a factor of a half from the y axis. So it's been brought closer to the y axis as well. So we've got a dilation back that way. So the upshot of that is that the graph becomes uh, much skinnier. I hate using that term, but I can't, use, I can't think of another term. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to go here, and of course. It's then got to go up through my axis, so it's much thinner like that. So that's our graph there. Uh, it's a combination of those two dilations pushing the graph uh, closer and also um, further away from, closer to the y-axis, but also further away from the x-axis. And there's my intercept, 0, 3. The range of that graph and the domain, uh, same as usual. Uh, domain, real numbers, range, positive real numbers. Next question, we've got f of x equals e to the power of x minus 2 plus 1, marking uh, the asymptote and intercept and stating the transformations, domain and range, and find the y-intercept correct to two decimal places. Okay, so here's, um, just having a look here at our function, y equals e to the power of x minus 2 plus 1. Let's copy that over here. All right, let's have a look at uh, our transformations. Now, the plus 2 is going to um, shift the graph two places to the right. So, translate. By the way, we haven't got any dilations here. Two units to the right. And the plus 1. Translates, translation is uh, one unit up. Okay, so there's our two transformations. Um, now, let's have a look at our normal graph, which is 
y equals uh, e to the power of x. So it's, as we've seen by now, it looks something like that. Uh, upwards. So we've been shifted. We get our transformations two units to the right and one unit up. Um, so two units to the right and one unit up. So our uh, point there, the 0, 0,1 point, if it's it's now going to be at 2, comma 2. So our graph will look um, similar in shape because there's no dilations, but it's been shifted. And uh, we've got also got, because it's been shifted, uh, one unit up because of the plus one, we've now got a new asymptote. So let's mark that in. Here it is. It's been shifted um, one unit up. So the new asymptotes, uh, probably need to be a bit more exact with that. Let's see how I go this time. It's close enough. Okay, so the new asymptote is y equals 1. Why? Because of that shift. Okay, that shift um, just here, the plus 1. Um, now, let's work out our y-intercept because that's going to guide our drawing of the graph. So the y-intercept, got some more room back here. We make x equal 0. So y will equal e to the power of 0 minus 2 plus 1. Y equals e to the power of neg 2 plus 1. And if we work that out, um, just looking here, that's going to be 1.14 to two decimal places. Y equals 1.14. So to guide us with our graph, uh, it's pretty close actually, isn't it? So it's 1.14. Oops. Um, I'll just try and get rid of that circle a little bit here. Um, so 1.14, marked in 1.14. So our graph is going to be something like this. And then it starts evening out like that to there. Okay, I'll try to draw it in a similar way as the original graph. It's a bit hard to do. Um, but you've got to try and, you know, if I could cut, cut and paste it, I could. I probably haven't done a great job there, but you can see uh, the effect it has. It's almost drawing the exact same shape as the original graph, shifted two across um, and, one, and one place up as well. So, hmm, don't know if I've done a great job with that. But anyway, you get the idea. Last problem in this video, um, obviously looking here at our reflections. We've got two minus e to the power of negative x which could also be written as uh, e to the power of, or sorry, negative e to the power of negative x plus 2, same thing. And the thing that strikes you here, there's three situations. There's that negative there, which reflects it in the x-axis. There's that negative there, which reflects it in the y-axis. And there's a plus 2, which shifts the graph up two places. Okay, so I've drawn up a set of axes and I've drawn the original y equals e to the power of x curve. And uh, I've drawn the equation that we're looking for here. Um, so before I worry about any of the intercepts, I'm actually going to uh, just draw a rough sketch of this graph and we can refine it later on. So uh, we've got two reflections straight up. Okay, so um, what we've got, I might uh, just draw this as a dotted line and change colour. So our first reflection, we'll put the graph down here like that, okay, uh, so that's reflection in the x-axis, and then the same graph then, and we can do this in a different order if you like, but you get the same thing, uh, that same graph then is reflected in the y-axis, so we get this sort of situation here, like so, blue graph, and then it gets shifted up two places, okay, so uh, this is where I probably need to pause and work out my intercepts because otherwise I could put them in, the, in a sort of inaccurate place. So the general direction I'm going from here is that I'm going to be moving that blue graph up two places. Okay, so there's no doubt um, uh, where the y-intercept is going to be, and we can check that in a moment. Um, but uh, if it moves up, it's also going to have an x-intercept, which we've got to find. All right, so let's look at the y-intercept. And uh, going back to normal colour. So the y-intercept. Y-intercept x equals 0. 
So we're going to get y equals negative y equals negative e to the power of 0 plus 2. So negative e to the power of 0 is negative 1 plus 2 equals 1. And we predicted that because if we take the blue graph up two places, it's definitely going to pass through 1. Now what about uh, x-intercept? So to find the x-intercept, we make y equals 0. So 0 equals negative e to the power of negative x plus 2. Um, if we take the negative e to the power of negative x over the other side, we get e to the power of negative x equals 2. We can then get uh, log e to the power of negative x equals 2. If log 2 to the base e equals negative x, then x, if we just, um, I'll just rub out that now, x will equal negative log 2 to the base e. Okay, so um, that's going to be um, our intercept. Now, the other thing is, and I want you to, to take note of this, um, that negative log 2 to the base e can also be log e uh, to the base e to the power of, if we move that out the front, negative 1, which is log a half to the base e. Okay, same thing. Um, and log half to the base e is located, I might just go to red, the colour will stand out, is located just in front of here, negative 1. Now you can work that out in your calculator if you want, want it's close to negative 1. Um, so that's going to be our x-intercept. So the final thing to do now is take that blue graph, uh, as I said, up two places. We've now got a guide, so it's going to look something like this. Sorry about my cat there. Um, that red graph there. And, um, oh, now that's the other thing. Forgot to mention that when we took that blue graph up two places, it's... Uh, asymptote is now at 2, okay, um, because uh, the asymptote for the blue graph is uh, the axis, y equals 0, the intercept is now, the, sorry, the asymptote is now 2, so um, I should have done it before, so my graph was a bit inaccurate there before, so let's do it again, so go something like this, and run along the axis, uh, the asymptote like that. So the domain of this graph, okay, so domain, will still be real numbers. The range, okay, um, is, and there's a couple of other ways we can put this, but a good way is to say negative infinity, negative infinity, um, to two, I mean we don't include two, uh, because it, it doesn't actually touch the asymptote, so it's all the um, y values below two would be the range there. All right, so that now enables you uh, to do exercise 4C, um, see how you go with that.